already know what it is. It's Barbershop Conversations. Hit the subscribe and the like button today. Sorry. Yeah. What, from your vantage point, what did you see in this fight that made Walters, I don't know, quit on the stool? I don't know, if he, was he hurt? Did he quit? Was you know, uh, the, the irony or poetry of it is that in the conversation with Tony Weeks, the referee, explaining what they wanted to do, his Panamanian trainer, Celso Chavez, was saying, no mas, no mas. And, and Roy had already said, sitting next to me at ringside, <coughs> it's exactly the same thing as Duran against Leonard. It's a fight that he can't compete in. He doesn't have the language, he doesn't have the skills to be able to deal with what he's looking at in front of him. He doesn't see an answer to how he can turn it around. He'd rather not get more embarrassed by what's happening, so he'll stop it right here. And, you know, it it's almost unfathomable to me that a world-class professional athlete is going to respond that way. What we expect is that they keep trying, keep searching, keep trying to find some way to turn it around. But obviously, from his professional perspective, knowing what he knows as a fighter, he had made a decision in his head that nothing like that was going to happen. He wasn't going to be able to turn around. And, and by the way, I think we could see that with each passing round, Basile was landing more combinations. He was landing combinations with more impact. And it was getting harder and harder for Nicholas to do anything whatsoever to answer. So, not unusual that that Lomachenko was able to do what he did. That was what we expected. Unusual that Walters responded the way he did. That was not what we expected to see. The, the footwork. You rewind. Hey guys, it's your girl Angie. You're watching Barbershop Conversations. Make sure to click the button below to subscribe, like the video, don't like it, leave a comment. Um, you can also follow me at um, Angelica Curtis on Instagram. See you soon.